Aloha, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. My name is Sprinklebeard, and today we're going to do Evaluate the Epic, and today we are doing Diamond. Wherever he might be. There he is. Diamond. Diamond is this really interesting character that I think will have a very interesting place in the game once the community grows a little bit and finds a better place for him. Right now, he's very underappreciated. I think he has really cool potential. Um, I was actually working on making up a diamond to like be an actual usable champion in my party. And then unfortunately, uh, I got the materials for Abomination. So I had to fuse them away instantly for Abomination. So with that being said, let's get started. So Diamond is our classic fighter and normal unit, right? They are a ground unit, so they are going to be into the thick of things. So we're going to start off by reading his talent, which is going to set the tone for what Diamond is supposed to do with the rest of his kit. Greatly reduces his revival time. For every one time of revival, increases his cost by four and his damage by 10%, stacking up to two times. Uh, so with that being said, like, let's look at his details. Uh, his attack is a bit on the lower side. However, since he's a fast revival and the, that damage increase, this is going to be a bit higher uh, than what it looks like. It is not going to be like crazy obscene damage, but it's going to be respectable damage, right? His attack interval is two, so he's one of the fastest attackers in the game once we summon him. And his revival time is 18 seconds. His cost is 12, making him, I believe, the cheapest of the fighters. So his basic attack deals 50 damage to one enemy two times, so he's a double striking enemy. Makes sense with the two daggers or swords that he has. I guess they're swords. When deployed, deals 240% damage to up to three nearby enemy units. And this 240 damage does scale up to being 320%. This means that if you give him things like attack percentage, crit rate, and crit damage, he's going to be thrown into battle like a grenade bomb dropping in. He's going to do a lot of damage. His ultimate, which is also his passive, when deployed, increases attack by 40%. So that base 3000 that we were talking about just a second ago, if we take 40% of it, no, not divided by... he's gaining 1,200 attack on top of it, which is pretty respectable. For every three attacks landed, the next one will inflict a stun. This effect lasts for 10 seconds. So we've already talked about champions that synergize well with stuns like Ayn. So we have the ability to forcibly stun things. And then even better is that he does gain attack increases from this um, and then you can actually increase his effect duration. Now, the reason I call him a grenade is that we're going to be throwing him out into combat. And he's most likely going to die. He is a fighter. Uh, he is not a tank. He is meant to jump into battle, do a much, uh, as much damage as he can. And then he is off, off to the Parish Lands very quickly. All right, so his passive is called Blood Coil. And then his ultimate is called uh, Mania. So with that being said, let's get into his awakenings. Blood Coil deals an extra 150% damage to enemies inflicted with bleed. So this bleed matters a whole lot. We have certain champions that will synergize with that. Uh, the most notable ones that come to mind is Komodo, because everybody's going to have access to Komodo. Uh, Salazar for uh, legendaries. And then there's like Laguru, Lugaru. I believe his name is. Uh, we, we have some bleeding champions in the game. Not tons yet. Uh, but he would synergize a little bit better with the bleeding champions than the aforementioned Ayn just a second ago. What's cool though is here we're seeing synergies across multiple champions. So it kind of doesn't matter who we pair him with. Or you could pair him with both. You could have Komodo up front with Ayn standing behind Komodo. And then when Komodo turns on his ultimate... You drop a uh, diamond right on the face of the enemy that's trying to fight Komodo, and the three of them will gangbang the crap out of that character. 
Uh, Awakening 2 is extra crit rate. Always good. That makes that grenade style strategy have a chance to crit. We like it. Upon death or retreat, inflicts immobilize upon up to five enemy units in range. I love the concept of this. Uh, I definitely see this being a very useful thing. And the immobilize lasts for three seconds. So it just makes the enemy unable to move. They can still attack. However, if they're immobilized, they're probably not going to be near anything to attack them. Unless you do wait for that bleeding effect, like, you know, for them to run into a bleeding, uh, a bleed champion to cut them. Penetration plus 5%. That means that when we throw him out as a grenade, he'll deal more damage. And then finally, his ultimate uh, duration is increased by plus two seconds. Now, in terms of awakenings, I'm a little bit sad that his awakening five is just that his ultimate gets an extra two seconds on it. Admittedly, that will take it up to 17 seconds, which is probably more noticeable. But for my mental, or what I think is going to make this champion amazing, is the concept of throwing them out as a grenade, blowing things up, and then you instant retreat him so that you can do it again, right? It's not that we want him out for a long period of time. A lot more of his damage does not come from his basic attacks or uh, this increased attack when we first summon him. It, it's literally from this 240% scaling up to 320. Th that is going to be an enormous amount of damage. Uh, we've already tested out with Nassault. We haven't reviewed Nassault yet on this channel. However... Uh, we did have a stream account that heavily focused on trying to make an assault great, and we were able to make him great. His base damage doing 240 damage on a basic attack was extremely noticeable. It, it was it, it was very impressive. So I think a lot of people are overlooking this number and being like, well, yeah, but that's only when he's deployed. Yes, but he's also got a very short revival timer that only increases by... Uh, it increases his cost from 12 to 16. You know, not a big deal. Uh, oh, I guess eventually 20. Eventually 20. But the point is you can cast him out frequently. All right. So now that we've reviewed the skill set and his stats, where would uh, Diamond be best at? Diamond is a really interesting champion in this game. If you were to get him as one of your earlier epics, I think he's going to shine most in the early game. I don't see him being bad in the later game when you can really customize those stats to make him very impressive. It's one of those things, though, because his gimmick is to die, right? He has a lot of advantages to dying or being removed off the board. I think that he is going to be a higher skill-based champion to play with. What I mean by that is that you're going to be wanting him in content where you want to be able to move a champion around the board. And because of his short revival time, you can do that. So things like the campaign, I actually see him being super amazing in. In the campaign, there's times when you're first playing a level... Having a champion that you can summon out early in response to anything and then dismiss and then resummon back out reliably, right? Not that full long minute wait. You know, 18 seconds in this game is incredibly short, but a minute feels like freaking forever. I think that in the campaign, he is specifically going to be amazing. In certain things like the arena, there are certain arenas where I could see him being okay to decent. Um, and it, as in that he can slow certain things down. You can drop him like that grenade on top of something and then he'll body block an attack or two. This might let your team focus on like if it's, uh, I wouldn't necessarily do like the AOE one. But if you're talking about like the sustained DPS, uh, he is technically sustained DPS. He's a lot of burst, pardon me, burst up front damage. But then throwing him down to separate the wave of six enemies, I could see that being good. And then on certain waves that deal damage back to you, even if he dies, he'll be coming back and coming back stronger, right? Uh, Void Rift would be another great place for him. There's a lot of levels where your champions 
are going to die and it's very hard to avoid that. So in the Void Rift, I think is another place where he's going to shine immensely. So when we get to our raids, in our promotion raids, he's not designed to hit flying enemies. So again, Marksman is kind of out. The only reason to bring him to something like Marksman or Gear Raid 3 is if your team is solid enough that you don't need him, but you have the extra slot, you could be giving him experience to level him up. So if he is your style of champion, or if you like the concept of, I have a champion that I can just throw around the board as needed to block things off, that would be a reason to level him up quickly. In Mages, Endurance, and Melee, I would say he's good in all three of these, all for that exact reason. He's movable. He is a great response champion. Uh, admittedly, he is not a proactive champion. He is responsive. You have to wait for things to get into a position. So certain champions like I, uh, the Frost Witch that sets frozen seeds on the ground as traps for your enemies to run into, there's great synergy there because if the enemy runs into the seed and pops it, you could then summon diamond instantly afterwards in that slot. However, you would have to do it instantly before I tries to plant another seed there because wherever she's placed seeds, you can't place a champion. Um, the other thing is as well, you can do it at the edge of I's range specifically. Um, any defenders he would obviously synergize well with as well. So any of these levels where you have a need to drop out something to block the path, which all three of these levels have a reason that you need to block the path. What is great about Diamond is that you can summon him in, he'll do his burst damage to kill things off, and then even if he dies, it, it's not a huge deal. You can summon him back later, and that's what he's designed to do. Guild Boss. So I'm going to put out a hot take here. I'm going to say that he's actually good in Guild Boss. Now, what I mean by this is that he has synergy with Wrath. So Wrath is the Lord of the Nightmares and he gains increased attack speed and all other nightmares gain increased attack speed based upon the number of nightmares you summon out. So for every nightmare you summon out, you get an additional, like I think it's like 5%, then 10% and then 15. Um, it's like a scaling attack percentage. It's amazing. With that being said, uh, Deimos coming out, doing his burst damage, attacking for a higher value, and then the fact that if he dies, we don't care, means that he really can take advantage of his full kit. His ultimate lasting that 15 or potentially 17 seconds long. But specifically, when you summon out Wrath and then any other Nightmare, and the order is actually not important, for every Nightmare you summon out, you get this static buff. So if you, anytime you summon out Wrath, all other nightmares are going to get plus 5%. Then the next nightmare you summon out, all nightmares are going to get 10%. And again, the order does not matter. Now summoning out the same nightmare does not increase in an additional 5%. So if you do Wrath, Diamond, Diamond dies, and then you Simon Diamond out again, no, you're not going to get the extra buff. Diamond is kind of that slot holder to say, yes, I'm a nightmare. But it's one of those things that in Guild Boss, there's a lot of times where you don't necessarily want to have uh, a certain champion out. Diamond might be a low damage dealer for you. Or again, the longer the battle goes on, Diamond's damage kind of goes down a little bit. Obviously, the more times you summon him, the better. What's great about Diamond, though, is that you could summon him out, let his ultimate's uh, duration run through then unsummon him and replace him with anybody else, like Idril or uh, Azoth. And then, as the dragon is doing his attacks back to your party, if somebody dies, you have Diamond to throw back out as a grenade to hit the clan boss for decent damage again. It's one of those things I don't think he's as bad as people want to believe he is. Uh, I do think, though, all of his damage is stacked in that first... 15 seconds of being summoned. That I will absolutely agree with. And then ideally, if you can get the target bleeding, Diamond will be a lot more effective. Because Diamond can't stun Clan Boss, I will say that is a like a mark against him for Clan Boss. 
Artifact Material Raid, I think this is definitely where Diamond probably shines the absolute most. You can throw him anywhere around that map. You can deal some big damage to something. And then even if he dies, it doesn't matter. You're getting Diamond back. You can probably use Diamond to respond to most of the waves or help hold off certain things while you're building up your party up front. This also means that you could wait for Salazar to walk into a position, summon Diamond on his face to delay him, and then after Salazar kills Diamond, you don't care. You just summon out your tank immediately afterwards, but you did your burst damage or you've done a good chunk of damage using Diamond. And then when your tank is tanking, you re-summon Diamond out again. I just, I love the concept of it. Tide is one of the few places I will say I don't think Diamond is going to have any value. The concept of being able to summon him out is fantastic, but Tide is an auto-run uh, feature in the game. Ugh, pardon me. So I don't think that this is going to be the place that he's going to shine at all because he would just be forced to be a ground unit and a ground fighter. And admittedly, I will say in terms of prolonged content, Diamond's whole kit is based around summoning him in and out of battle, not staying on the battlefield. So for that reason, I don't think he would be best here. There is the potential, though, he's decent because he is very easy to build up in terms of battle power, right? That BP. So things like attack percentage, flat attack, crit rate, and crit damage. That's all Diamond needs. He doesn't need rage regen. He doesn't need attack speed. Neither one of those helps that grand entrance that he has. So what is fantastic is, again, gear-wise, just like Osiren, who we reviewed recently, it does let you push his gear in a very specific direction and then some of that attack speed gear to focus on, in on other champions. Resource Raid, I don't think that this would be the best place for him in both uh, EXP and Gold Raids. However, it is one of those things that dropping him in like a bomb potentially could be good so let's go see the the potential to it so i already have him here uh because i'm working on leveling him up and specifically i have given him my comets gear so in this fight that we're about to watch uh understand that he has my best gear and my comet is probably not going to be doing the damage we expect of him So I'm going to let this first wave go, just because that, like, there's only three enemies. We definitely don't need diamond for that. But I also want to be making sure that nothing gets through. <laughs> so here's grenade one. We're going to wait for things to get into position a little bit better. This is going a lot slower than I wanted it to. Any of you guys feeling the anticipation? <laughs> So there, he did one-shot everybody, and here he is just going to town. He's doing decent damage. This is a four-star diamond, so this is not like the fully leveled up version. Now here, I do have Volca, and Volca has an awakening, so she actually reduces the death timer of diamond. That was not intentional for this video. I kind of apologize. But really cool synergy, again, that I wasn't even considering. Let's see. Game! I, I hate my mouse so much. Well, there's a misplacement for him. This is also one of the joys of his death timer being so small, is that if you have problems like me and you misplace units down, see how many he hits. What? Let this man run with blood. So he hit about five units there, from what I can tell. Ever ready. Immortality bores me. But yeah, admittedly, I feel like this feels very, very good just summoning him in and out of combat. And I'm not letting him go his full 18 seconds, or 15 seconds that he would do for that damage. 
And more specifically, I don't believe my diamond is upgraded at all. Um, Ready or not, I think I had the previous. So as I said, I was working on a five-star diamond for Even this video. I and I think I might have invested dust into him. And unfortunately, because of... Uh, because of fusion reasons, I ended up not... I, I think I fused away the copy that had dust into him, yeah. Uh, I foresee him being a decent champion, and the ability to move him around so easily makes me really like Diamond a whole lot. Uh, let's see, he does not have a five-star specific promotion, that's unfortunate. Yeah, it's really just his talent. Uh, it's, it's a really cool concept for a talent. I do wish though, it would like scale a little bit higher, like even just three times, or that would have been a perfect awakening is, you know, you can increase his cost up to like 24, which would be a lot, but maybe it would double his damage at that point. Uh, I think that he's a very fascinating champion to say the least. When it comes to gear raids, gear raids one and two, he's going to be amazing in. Uh, gear raid one, we just have tons and tons of enemies coming at us and they all get bottlenecked. So you can really get the biggest advantage out of every single thing in his kit. You get the grenade aspect of him doing that grand entrance in. Then after, uh, I guess, blood coiling in. Uh, then after that, for 15 seconds, he's allowed to attack. And then even if he dies, he's immobilizing enemies. Now that will let them still attack the wall, but he's still immobilizing them. There's certain enemies that are not going to be in range of the wall, or they're going to be in that spot where one of your other damage dealers is going to town on them. So I foresee him being amazing there. In Gear Raid 2, this lets you resummon him out frequently. And Gear Raid 2, one of the strategies is summoning and unsummoning champions to deal with the con uh, with the enemies in it. I absolutely foresee him being super amazing in Gear Raid 2 and just potentially overlooked there. Gear Raid 3, I will admit, I don't know if his grenade aspect does hit flyers. It's something I wouldn't be stressing though. I, I would honestly just say you would be better off summoning any marksman, even a poison marksman, over the concept of trying to use him as a grenade to maybe finish things off. I would assume he does not hit those things up in the air because as we were summoning him out in that last level, he was kind of swirling his daggers around or his swords around him. Uh, yeah, I, I would do that with a, uh, a side of caution for sure. Lastly, the faction trials. So in the all, uh, the, the basic trial, I definitely see him being useful, not incredibly useful though. Uh, being able to respond to certain lanes or delaying certain enemies, I definitely see the advantage in him doing that. However, uh, the boss doing its scream, I don't foresee Diamond potentially lasting long enough. Uh, Diamond is absolutely a full glass cannon build. I can't imagine ever wanting things like HP or defense on him because we want to take advantage of those death timers that he has. Uh, for the... Uh, nightmare, Trial of the Nightmare. There's not often that you need Diamond specifically to be dropping in on things. However, again, because he's so easy to summon out, even if you don't need him specifically, just his cheap cost lets you build up to your full Nightmare synergy really fast. So for that reason, I think he's very good. Uh, I haven't pushed too far in my Nightmare Trials. I'm slowly getting there. Now that I have Volca to 6-star, I think I can push higher content. Because right now, the Nightmares don't have a healer. Uh, Volca is absolutely the closest thing they have to a healer. So, I think that is... She's the champion I've needed. Now it's just about getting all my characters' stats to a better place. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me uh, today on our diamond review. If you like the content, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to join us, come over to twitch.tv backslash sprinklebeard, and you can watch Sunday sleep on my lap like a little baby girl. But of course, until that next time, ta-ta.